Hey everyone, I'm Emmy and I'm the host of the Graphic Club podcast. In today's video, we're going to meet the story of April. She is from Argentina and the founder of Laland. I don't think you want to miss her horror story, so stay tuned in this video. How are you? What is up with you? Hi. Hi, nice meeting you. And yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. So, Abril, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us what do you want the world to see? What is April and everything we should know about you? So, uh, I like to say that I'm a very creative person. I like to learn new things all the time. Uh, that's why I love to be in crypto, working in like Web3 and stuff, because I think it's a very innovative world, as well as like AI and all of the startup ecosystem. So I think that is that that is what defines me. I'm a very creative person. And yeah, I just like to build different things. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for telling all about you. Now, I think we should head out to... How was your journey in Web3? Could you tell us a little bit about how did you enter to this world? Were you in Web2? Um, what is your background? Something that it's very particular that we should know about your journey in the Web3 ecosystem? Yeah, so basically I started to work in crypto. Like I've always been working in crypto. Um, and I started like four years ago. I've started as a developer working with solidity the language for EVM development like mainly ethereum uh building smart contracts and i've been working with some DeFi protocols um some exciting projects honestly i've been very excited about, about that and then i've been like i switched my career as a developer to developer relations so i've been basically working in this company called fleek and i've been building like the developer community a little bit of developer experience hosting workshops you know all of these like social skills that i love um and yeah that's my like my career in crypto i think has been very exciting because i joined in the right moment of course i'm very young so yeah i mainly work in crypto i i i think i just work in web 2 and my first job that i was basically working in a video game company as a front-end developer but that's it <laughs> okay that's amazing so your whole journey was all about being in web 3 and i think that you really entered in in a specific and perfect time so maybe you have seen it all and this is where i want to like include these type of questions about diversity and equity in terms of inclusion so how do you perceive the level of inclusivity within the web 3 job market compared to the more traditional web 2 like you should have seen that at the very beginners maybe it was an ecosystem full of men but how did you feel like you were at the starters of Web3. So what do you think about the inclusivity that is in this ecosystem? So I really feel like Web3 is very inclusive. The community, especially like you can you can go to these events, like if you remember them, con, whatever, all of these big events, and you can find a specific niche of women communities, which is amazing. And I don't, I don't think I've seen that in other industries like Web2 or even like AI, for example. Um, but it's, tech in general is full of men. But I think Web3 has this particularity of inclusion. And I, I just love it. I just love it because you can feel like, for example, I've been invited to a retreat only for women after December. And it's amazing. Like how, like, I, I don't think that exists in other industries, to be honest. So I really feel that it's a very inclusive community. I know that maybe it's hard to believe, like for the web to uh, people that are still out there, or maybe women that still have like the doubts of coming into web3 but i'm really saying that it's much more comfortable than in web2 i think 
So I, I just believe that this ecosystem is for everyone and especially for women, as you say that you're going to a retreat full of women. And that's amazing. Like these things you don't see very often in other technologies. So I think that's great. Thank you so much. So um, how does the salary work between uh, Web 2 and Web 3? I know that this is maybe um, like a question very tricky for you because as a Web 2, you have like some experience and Web 3, you have a little bit more. But we're getting to a point where we're going to talk about your um, own enterprise that is called Laland. But I want to know like for these like first question, like how do you perceive the salary? Like, do you see that there's equity or still we have these gaps between what we know about the traditional world and what we are now? So I feel it's really, it really depends on the market. For example, if we are having a bad moment, like I feel like last year was not the best moment for crypto uh, in the market, and it was a lot of like layoffs, you know, like companies were hiding uh, cheap employees. Like, and when I say cheap, it's like they were not giving equity or good compensations. And I've seen that uh, from my own experience because I, I just like, like I got fired and then I was like looking for jobs and a lot of them were not as great as uh, it is now we're in 2021 i think now we are again reaching this point of being in a good position um so i will say it really depends on the market and for example in web3 i think now companies are giving equity in terms of like tokens like you know like a lot of protocol has their own tokens so i think that's great and that is the difference between like web 2 and web 3 right like in web 2 you work in a fintech or in an ai company and maybe you have like uh stock options but um but maybe not i don't know i've never worked in, in that much in that industry so I don't know, but based on the companies I have on Lalens that are actively looking uh, for remote employees, they are very good in terms of compensation and equity. So, yeah, I think it's it's, it's fair. Okay, so I think that um, it's very encouraging to know that like women that are out there that want to pursue a career in Web3 have the same opportunities as men in terms of compensation and in terms of having a decent amount of money that it's compared to to the men, you know? So I think that it's very great. And it's also amazing to know that you have companies within your company that really uh, want to like keep the equity. And it's not that hard for them to like do that. It's because it just feels natural. So um, I want to know about Laland. I know that this is something very big that is coming and I really want to show up your talent as a founder in Web3, but also I think you should tell us more about what Laland does and what is uh, like, what do you love about Laland? Please tell us. So basically I started Lalit because I was like, you know, I'm from Latin America and for me, I've been struggling with this, like, I don't know, economic crisis in Argentina, for example, I was like, okay, I want to get paid because I'm talented. I think I deserve to get paid a, a, a good salary, right? Um, so I was like, I want to find a remote job and, you know, it's really hard to go to LinkedIn or Twitter and if you don't have the right connections, maybe it's even harder. So I was like, I want to help people from Latin America, whether are software engineers or like designers, marketing people, all remote tech workers to find their dream job remotely, like mostly for U.S. companies, because the time zone is very like convenient. And for U.S. companies, it's actually a really good deal to hire people in Latin America. So I start to work in Latin uh, and it's basically a job board um, where companies can post their open roles. Like, for example, X company is hiring an XJS developer in Argentina or Brazil or Colombia, and they can post their jobs and they will receive a lot of applicants because from the other side, candidates can create their profiles, can basically like apply to these jobs. 
Um, we also have a newsletter, a weekly newsletter with new remote jobs. So yeah, basically that's what we do right now for sure in the future as we keep growing. We will add more features and you know it's just a hard process because it's basically a marketplace um we are not focusing only web three jobs but we have a lot and our main goal because i know about the crypto market um is is basically like to get more companies in web three but it's not a requirement um but yeah that's basically what we do thank you so much lalin seems like the perfect a marketplace for any web developer or maybe developer out there, designers, business development stuff to keep on their hunting job search. So thank you for having this initiative. I know that we out there struggle to find jobs. And that's also what I wanted to ask you. Like, why did you come up with this idea? Like, I know that uh, you worked as a developer relations and you have a lot of experience in the crypto world but what was the problem that you saw out there that you needed to create Laland? i was um as i said i got fired and i actually had a hard time for myself because I like to be proactive. I like to be working, whether it's full time or in a project or freelance. And I was, I found myself in a position where I was like, I was not able to find a job quickly because the market was not good in crypto. And I was like, you know what? This is the right time to do a startup, like to build something by, by my own, you know? Um, so that's what I started. And I always really like the startup ecosystem. Like I love working in early stage companies. So, you know, when you start your own company is even more challenging and you learn a lot of things. So yeah, that's why that, that was my main motivation for sure. It's amazing. Like how you said that this is your time to do things. It's not very common in this world, like to put yourself out, put yourself out there. It's very hard. So I really am proud of what you're accomplishing in specifically in Latin America, because I know that this world can be a little challenging. So now I want to find out about what are the next project or activities that uh, Laland has in this like 2024 roadmap if you can tell us a little sneak peek of what is coming on what to expect and of course the listeners want to know like what else is Lalin going to do so basically I will I'm very excited actually because I like to take risk and I was like you know sometimes they call email strategy it's not working. Like I'm sending emails to companies, hey, like offering my product, whatever. Give even I give them like a discount. Maybe that doesn't work because not like maybe I'm in a spam folder. They don't they ignore me, whatever. So I was like, I will take the risk to go to San Francisco for a month, um, and I will just go to events where there's a lot of founders or recruiters or whatever, and I will just go pitch them in person. I will just go to find people that are like hiding remotely and they want to find good software engineers and you know i can i can be the bridge for them so yeah that's my that's what i will do this quarter i think i'm, I'm very excited i'm just going in a few weeks so for me it's, um, it will be a, an adventure i'm not looking to raise money because i don't think it's a project that needs to raise money i'm just a solo founder it is working in autopilot, so it doesn't. Need, I, I I don't need to hire anyone, um, and I think it's fun to do it by myself. Of course, like I'm also looking for like some exciting project in crypto because I love crypto, and you know I just want to be part of the ecosystem, still being part. So, but yeah, that's my my main goal for the next quarter. That's amazing. And I hope that you find the right partners for your platform. I think that that's an amazing thing to pitch and to acquire experience by talking to people in, in events. So congratulations. Uh, now I want to like pass to something like very punctual that it's about skills in demand. Like you have seen what do companies need specifically with your platform 
So I really want to see like from your experience, uh, if you can like lead to um, women that are watching and listening to this episode, if there's a particular skill or set uh, of backgrounds that are currently in high demand for these, I don't know, maybe web two, but web three job market that you like suggest people to like must put their attention to. So I would say a lot of companies for sure, like the first thing I would recommend is learn how to code. Uh, I'm not perfect in that actually. I'm like learning every single day. I'm trying to contribute to projects, build my own small projects, you know, like I keep learning because when you're a developer, you keep, you need to keep learning every single day to stay up to date. But I would recommend learn how to code because that's the high demand job right now in any industry, but also in crypto. Um, and the second one, I will say like, I don't know what I've been doing is developer relations, right? There's a lot of open positions and it's really hard to find people with technical background that can explain uh, technical products to all their developers. It's really hard. It's not like a marketing people. No, you have to know uh, technical things like how to like, I don't know, run a workshop or organize a hackathon and judge a hackathon. And, you know, it requires a lot of social skills that most developers probably don't have. And that's why it's a hard position to hire. Um, so I will say developers, developer relations and sales, because all the companies need someone to, I don't know, like to have in, the, in their team to sell the product, to go to the market. And, you know, um, I think that there's the three things that I will say, focus on that. If you like something, um, like more in the technical side, for sure. Thank you. I think that maybe most of our viewers don't know what is a developer relations, because I know that this position is maybe something new and it's something that you don't see very often in this Web2 ecosystem. So could you tell us more about what is a developer relations? And maybe if you can tell us like a little bit about your experience uh, to empower others to just pursue that career if they are interested in. So it's really difficult to explain what is developer relations because it's basically five jobs at the same time. You have to know how to code. It's, it doesn't require that you're like the senior engineer. No, no, no. But you you need to know a little bit, at least uh, the simple things. Um, you need to know how to code. You need to write, I don't know, technical articles because you're basically trying to sell a product that is focused for developers. So that's why it's called developer relations, but also not only I'll try to sell this product to developers, but also retain them. And that implies developer experience, which you can be doing like technical documentation, like building documentation, um, building SDKs, APIs. It really depends on the product. So. It's like both things that like you can be the social devrel that goes to events, house workshops, all the fun parts, or developer experience, which is more like, okay, more like customer experience, I will say. Um, so yeah, it's basically this. There's a lot of things that the, it, it just one job. It's amazing. It's amazing that you're telling this because I think that, it, that it's gold because nobody really knows uh, this positions and they don't know where to start so I think that right now you're giving light to these viewers so um, I want to go to the advice part that I think is very important in every episode that we have um, I really want to know a real perspective and a real advice for women out there so what advice would you offer to women seeking to enter into the web3 job market particularly those who may be facing challenges in the onboarding process? So I will, you know, I was actually working on this for my best friend. She's trying to join crypto. She's like, I, I want to learn. I don't know anything. I want to learn. I want to work in crypto. So what I told to her is basically you should be part of communities. Like you should be hanging around 
in communities, whether it's online or you go to local like local events. Like there's so many, at least in like Argentina, there's so many. Uh, I feel like in, in entire Latin America, there's so many crypto events. You should be part of that because you get to know the people. And I think it's really important to have right connection. And this is like for everyone, right? For every industry, you need to have the right people in your ecosystem because they can open doors like a lot for you uh, if you're good, right? Um, so I will say, yeah, be part of communities, learn every single day, like, you know, when you have a Twitter account and you follow the right people, you can learn by reading threads or, you know, articles. There's so many people building a lot of cool things out there. But um, yeah, I, I will say that it's really important to learn. And I think I'm very self-taught, so I like to learn by myself. I go to the internet, like internet is a huge encyclopedia. So it's a huge book with a lot of information. You can you can learn whatever you want. You get you can learn how to go. You can learn how to, I don't know, do SEO, how to make um, I don't know, a marketing strategy, whatever you want to do, you can find it in internet. So yeah, that's my advice for sure. And I will say women communities help you a lot, a lot. So oh, that's perfect. So um, we also want to like ask you something, but it's like very little, like what type of advice would you give to women that really um, want to pursue a career on being a founder? Because this is something entirely different, but I think that you right now are taking this risk. And I think that maybe the advice that you're giving to these people or these women that are hearing us would be very much appreciated. Like what advice would you give them if they want to create something for the people, community or something that they want to do? So I think it's really important to find a good co-founder because you can feel encouraged by them. Um, if you find right the right co-founder, uh, maybe you're not technical, but you can find someone technical and you can like, you both can complement each other. Um, I will say I will start with that. And then, I don't know, sometimes you can have ideas and you can think, oh, this is actually really stupid. What if Sam Alman, the founder of OpenAI thought, oh, this is really stupid. AI, ChatGPT, no, you know what I mean? Like Facebook, uh, Nothing is stupid. Uh, you need to keep going. You need to believe in yourself. I think it's really important when you're a founder to believe in yourself. Like, oh my God, you need to have this confidence of being like, I will succeed with this. I will make it work. Even if right now I don't have any customers, any revenue, I'm not making any money. I will succeed. I will make it work and I will find a way to make it work. I think it's really important to have this mindset. The mindset is, oh my God like essential. So yes, I will say that, like find the right co-founder or maybe you can be a solo founder. It doesn't matter like me, um, but you need to like be consistent and confident. So, yeah. I think you're giving like great advice. Like I really admire the work that you do. I think you are a bold person that really is doing great stuff. And I only wish that Lalin keeps on growing And of course, um, we'd love to be part of what Lalin does in the future. So thank you so much for this interview. I think it was a great episode. And of course, we are going to keep in touch and maybe have a second episode soon when new things are coming and new things are out there for you to share with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm very open to answer questions about, I don't know, if people, I know that it's really hard at first when you're starting your career or your company. I'm not an expert on this. I'm learning. I'm very young. I'm learning, but I like to encourage people. I just like to talk about things. And if you need some advice or if you just need to talk with me, I'm very open. My DMs are open and I will be in December the 28th. February so yeah I'm open to grab a coffee with someone and just keep making connections thank you so much
Thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget that the Grab Her Cloud podcast is all about empowering and inspire more women into Web3. Also, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, follow us on every social media account that we have. We have a little pop-up for you, so don't forget to click the link in the description box. Hope to see you in the next one and stay tuned. Bye-bye.